So some of the questions will overlap. Yeah, some of the questions will overlap and then some of them will just be conversational. Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, Facebook family. Hello, if you're joining us from another part of the world. Um, we are so excited this afternoon and today to have with us Ms. Sarisha Rameshla Komal. It's 15 hours. And uh, welcome to Seeds of Hope, Sarisha. Thank you so much, Nishani. What a pleasure to be here, really. In fact, you've come highly recommended, so I could not say no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming on board. We are so, so excited. I can't wait to chat to you and um, welcome. Welcome from the team and welcome from South Africa. Very, very hot South Africa at the moment. And you're joining us from? I'm here at the moment in Abu Dhabi. Equally yeah. hot, equally hot, uh, but still loving it. But I'm grateful to connect with South Africa at least uh, through technology via you. So thank you for that connection. Thank you. You know, Sarisha, uh, reading your bio and reading what you do, I was absolutely amazed and blown away. And I thought, how does one woman do all this in, in one lifetime, you know? And um, tell us a little bit about uh, the many roles you have and tell us about, about you. You know, the bottom line is my pride and joy comes from the fact that I am born and raised in the southern suburbs of Durban, Mirbank. Right. And I, I'm a part of a family that's so soulful, so active, and so alive. Yes. And the community that I was raised in is equally so alive and so well and vibrant yes. that it's very difficult not to be inspired to live a good life from that kind of background. Oh. So that's where it actually really starts. Uh, it's the opportunity to really grab hold of all that's been given to me uh, through the lineage that I flow from yes. and equally from the parents that I have and the family, that extended family and community that I'm raised in. Yeah, and, and what, what richness that is to have been born into a family and a community that have enabled you to, to sort of have a, a bigger world view, you know? Absolutely, totally. You know, I mean, I think Indians, uh, you know, on the whole, yeah. they are really based in that sense that we've been put in a situation and we have such a strong sense of solidarity and unity. Yes. You know, Despite and in spite of the many issues that, of course, we can talk about, but still there is a really key solidarity factors that brings us together and equally motivates us to live really, really well. Um, so that's the background in which I am speaking from. And that's the very proud background in which I would always um, love to be introduced from. Yeah. And it's a wonderful, wonderful heritage, Trisha. Absolutely. It's a More wonderful. than 150 years at the moment, definitely we have so much to be proud of. Yeah, yeah. And tell me, so what, I love your passion, I love your energy. Um, what energizes you? What gives you that, that let's get up and go kind of space? You know, knowing the fact that I am born female, I don't think that's a coincidence, first and foremost. Um, knowing the fact that I'm born uh, for me, on a personal note, knowing the fact that I'm born Hindu means that I have this creator energy that's mm. deep within me that I need to tap in. I need to truly, truly appreciate the resourcefulness uh, yeah. that's within me as an individual. So that's where the inspiration comes. It's knowing that I am part of a broader community that accepts potential as infinite. Yeah. So who am I to sit back, quite frankly? and just you know, become dormant about it. I need to be able to own my space. And that's how I'm pr practically trying to live each day. Consistently baby steps, nothing, you know, no major loops and things, baby steps, but co with consistent practice and understanding that every one of us has potential. And so do I. That's the bottom inspiration. Yeah, it's such a good question to be asking ourselves. Who am I actually to sit back? Absolutely. I, you know, I mean, all of us understand that we're ordained in this birth. How yes. do we make sense of it? How do we live it? And how do we give gratitude for all that we are? Because if you look at our lives at the moment, you know, whilst we, you know, right in the heart of COVID still, equally, there's still so much to be grateful for. Yes. Um, and when we work from that background, and if we understand our mindset, 
from that background, quite frankly, uh, we cannot be, you know, lay individuals, dormant people. We have to be able to honor the resourcefulness uh, within ourselves and tap into it. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I love that. I love what you said. And, you know, I've been thinking and, and, and actually sitting with the word honor of recently. Yeah. So when you say you have to honor the resources, honor the creative in you, honor the woman in you, that's powerful. That's yeah. really powerful. Thank you. You know, the bottom line is women have the potential to, you know, to create energy into matter. So we can decide what kind of matter do we want to create in the world? Is it just procreation of beautiful babies? We can create joyfulness. Yes. We can create the kind of world that we want, you know, full of compassion, full of manifestation of all the good things in the world. That mm -hmm. is equally the co-creator responsibility of us as women. So we need to honor that. Yeah, that's beautiful, beautiful. And you know, talking about women, you work with women across the globe. Um, what are some of the key trends and challenges that you are picking up? I know that you work with women in the rural space and women in the corporate. So like, tell us, tell us what is an overview? What are the things that you are picking up that are, that are common to us? You know, it's a, so, that's really a wonderful question. I love it because the question itself is so connecting. You know, the bottom line is whether we are in Egypt, whether we are in South Africa, whether we are living in some other part of the world. Mm. And I'm very fortunate to be able to expand and explore uh, different diverse communities, different cultures. Yes. You know what's really amazing and common factor? Every single person aims to belong to something more. We want to feel connected to something more. And yeah. it's a wonderful process and a wonderful way to you know, to acknowledge that even though we are so diverse in the communities or the cultures that we come from, as individuals, we want to also be appreciated and connect and belong. And that's been current wherever and however. No matter how the woman presents herself yes. on the first day of training, guaranteed by either the afternoon or by the end of the training, be it a two-day two or three-day uh, training program, she just loses it and, and expresses her reality that I also want to be part of something bigger. And I think that, yes, yeah, sorry, carry on. No, sure, that's it. Yeah, you know, Sarisha, isn't that a fundamental human need to have a sense of belonging, to be seen and to be heard? You know, and isn't that the most generous gift we can give each other when we Absolutely. say, I see you. you it more beautifully than me, well done. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 absolutely wonderful. And and I mean that is the the gift that we can give women. You know, if we take the time to listen, take the time to to be with each other, um, we can create this almost the solidarity of um, of I see you. You know, I hear you. Absolutely. Yeah. We can really create a sisterhood. You know, one that's international and still connected by heart. So yeah. irrespective of where we are, the fact that we are women, we are connected by heart, connected by the kind of experiences. Now, you know, whilst I say that I don't want to categorize all females in one monolith category, yes. Yes. no, absolutely not. But at the same time, when we look at the diversified uh, groups that we've worked with uh, and look at the general ideas that emerge from it, um, there is still that need to want to be part of. And when we meet, that's what we start to unpack using mm. different transformational tools that are available to us throughout. Yeah, yeah. I, I often call it or refer to it as an orphan spirit, you know. People are wandering around like orphans, you know. Right. And, and there is a collectiveness that needs to bring that into, yeah. um, into almost a channel of love, if you want to call it that. Absolutely, absolutely. Or just awareness. But yes. I really think, you know, and one of your, the things that you were talking about is the whole COVID impact. I really feel that when I'm observant of all that's happening during COVID especially, right, uh, there is such a, a more stronger sense of solidarity. Yes. And not just with women, but in terms of even different countries suddenly starting yes. to, to be unified, to yes. trust each other more, because yes. the experience has become so much more the same yes. and so much more real for everybody anywhere in the world. So. Mm we've managed to tap into that level of consciousness, that level of awareness, that we are humans. Yes. We are humans, irrespective of where we are. So how do we then actually commit to each other 
and live more consciously and more connected. That I think is one of the gifts from COVID, no doubt for me. Yeah. 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 And you know, uh, one of the things about COVID is the impact and the impact on women is the fact that we are seeing uh, the, the economic the side of it, where more and more women, because of the unpaid labor that they have to, that they have to do, um, I mean, it, it amounts to trillions of rands um, in, in terms of un, un, unpaid labor, unpaid work, uh, caregivers, um, and the impact of having to do that, to do schooling and plus manage a job has, you know, it, it, the stats are showing that more than, you know, for every two women, there's one that's probably going to leave the workforce and the economic downturn. And that's quite concerning. That's quite concerning. Yeah, it's concerning. But, but you know, what's the other thing? If you've looked at the amount of women that become far more resourceful and so much more creative yeah. because of this pressure, yeah. you know? So suddenly we've been putting this pressure pot of COVID, yes. but we haven't just been, you know, suppressed by it. Yes. We've yes. actually been rejuvenated by it in so many ways yeah. that we didn't know the kind of creativity that exists because of the pressure now, we are tapping into that. Yeah. So again, you know, I'm, maybe it's just that I'm an eternal optimist, you know, but <laughs> you know, that's the bottom line for me right now. Yeah. We are still able to find the sense of creativity yeah. Uh, and productivity that's required right now. Yeah. And I, I think that's a very important point because I think it's something that women bring into the world. This ability to like, no matter what, I'm going to find a way to do this. I remember growing up as my, my, my aunt and my mom would always have, I'm not sure how they fed all the people that they fed out of this little pot of food that they cooked, but they were always abundant in their thinking. And I think in, in their way of being and in the heritage that they, that they gave to us. Okay. And so, so we're seeing it now with women all over the world and it is wonderful. You are right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is wonderful. Um, but tell me, uh, Srisha, you run a nonprofit and you're very sort of low key about this because you don't want sort of, you, you don't want to help yeah. humanity with, with sort of, you know, with, with bright lights, you just want to do the it. The work needs to be done. Yeah. That's it. The work needs to be done, and the work needs to be done in the way best it can be of solution to the world. That's the bottom yeah. line. Uh, and I don't just think it's myself. I know of many women who are doing this kind of thing, who yeah. are volunteering at a, at a rate that is absolutely profound. And yeah. they are doing it because they understand the need. They understand the value also of their input and they yes. are doing it. So it's not just myself. Um, it's many women that are doing it. What are they doing? Making sure that there are solutions to ease the burden of another sister, making yes. sure that we are building homes and we don't need to all be, you know, out and about in terms of media, what have you get the work done. That's it. Mm -hmm. And connect nothing more than that really. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that because what's happening is that, you know, uh, I just love the humi humility of the, what you do because I think you underestimate the, the span of influence that you have globally. And um, I just want to thank you for the work that you do as well. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And tell me, in your view, what does holistic empowerment look like? Holistic empowerment for me, the bottom line for me about holistic empowerment means that I understand I'm not just this beautiful physical body. Yeah. There is so much more about me than meets this physical body. I have an active mind. I am able to think. I have emotions that if channeled and become more aware of, I can actually become far more resourceful in the world. I can even live more holistically because of that. Yeah. I'm a spiritual being also. I'm deeply connected to the higher source, however and whoever you may consider he or she to be. But holistic empowerment for me means understanding that I'm not just a physical being, that yeah. there is so much more about me. And at different stages in my life, I should be able to at least tap into it, get more involved, become more aware of what my potential is, uh, expose myself and become vulnerable. You know, I, the one thing I really have found uh, has been something that worked very, very well for me is allowing myself to be vulnerable yeah. in the last 15 years, not saying, 
it's not, you know, I cannot do this. So what if somebody picks on me or somebody says something negative? Ultimately, all of us are in the experience. Yes. Yeah. That's the yes. bottom line. Yes. So um, holistic empowerment means knowing that I'm a whole being. And a whole being means that I have so much more potential and power that I need to take the responsibility and start to unearth the layers of me to truly become part of the solution in the world, not just for the world, but also for myself, to live yeah. my best life, yeah. to live it with purpose and passion. I love that. I love that word that you used. You said, it is my responsibility to do this. You know? Of course. It is my responsibility yes. to do this. You know, Srisha, when I was raising my boys, and I'm a single mom, when I was raising my boys, I always um, doing, um, not community work, but giving back in some way or form has always been a part of what we do. It's not charity work or community work. It's yeah. what we do. It's just what we do, you know? And, and, and I think and, our heritage does that for us. Yes. We, we, we've come from that lineage of, you know, the little, that, like, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you don't even know how mom's little pot and the small amount, it just was so full of abundance. Yes. We always worked with that intention. It just flows yes. because, you know, energy goes where our attention is focused on. Focused on. So we want to give more and ultimately we'll start to align with that kind of frequency only. And that's yes. it. Yeah. And you know, to, to, to actually think of it as well, actually it's my responsibility. You know, yeah. to be my brother's keeper, to be my sister's keeper, it's actually my responsibility. How wonderful, yes. How wonderful is that? How wonderful is that? And how, um, it, it, you know, it, in this time of COVID with so much of isolation, imagine if that was our message and that was the way that we lived. And we came out of this, we came out of this pandemic with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think many of us have, and many of us are understanding that, you know, it's really not just about me. It's yeah. about a collective, consciousness and the collective community because that's who I am I belong I'm part of yes yeah. I don't live in isolation even though COVID is here I don't live in isolation what I do impacts on you yes. Um, yes. what you do impacts on me whether I accept it or don't accept it yes. somehow yes. there is that connection and reality that the two of us are connected so COVID even though we've been you know sitting perhaps in our homes alone how I responded even to COVID it has a huge impact on my neighbor, yes. my community yeah. at large, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's so true. So, uh, Srisha, you're also an author, and uh, your book, Notes on My Fridge, um, looks very, very interesting. I, I looked at the, the, the YouTube uh, channel on it and the YouTube uh, reviews. The reviews are outstanding. Tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, Notes of My Fridge actually came about because of the counseling that I used to do on a voluntary basis yeah. uh, over very many years. Now, I, I'm very lazy to just write point form in order for me to process later on. So yes. I wanted a more creative way in which to actually uh, keep the notes so that I can think about the possible kind of impact and solutions I can have when we meet again, you know, in terms of people that I'm working with. So I chose to write it poetically. I chose to write it in narrative forms. Um, so that it becomes far more interesting to read. And yeah. I think in that sense, it also allowed me to tap into my own creativity and um, figure out, uh, it's basically, it was a change of mindset, really, in the way I worked with that. So, yes. yeah. So what happened is I took many of the notes. There were a lot of the similar, same kind of information, but we selected the more things that, creates a more collective kind of thought, right? Yeah. And just select those emotions and put them in a book form. Um, you know, I want to say it's not an easy read. And I always say this, and very, very often whenever I say, why is it not an easy read? It's not yeah. a storybook. It's not a storybook. It may look beautiful and is a storybook, but it's not a storybook. It's really the lived realities of so many women across. Um, and from that perspective, it's not a storybook. It's real. And the thing that I'm very proud of with regards to, you know, being able to put it in a book form is yes. that women were able to give permission to say, you know what, use the story, use these stories to heal somebody else. Yes. Allow yes. somebody else to also find themselves in the story. Yeah. And that was really, really important for me uh, to be able to use it. Now, what happened with the book um, 
was we started using it at the beginning of uh, transformational uh, workshop facilitation programs, again, on a voluntary basis. So what we did is we chose excerpts from the book and we basically read it aloud or we had it overplayed. Um, and trust me, you know, immediately you are going to get a response like, okay, so it's not only me. And as soon as we can acknowledge that, there's an opportunity for, so I'm surrendering now. And as yes. soon as I surrender and I, as soon as I start to admit and submit to that emotion, it means I'm taking the first step to healing. Yes. And that was really, really important for me. Although it's a small book, I think, and I, I'm biased there, uh, it's a very potent read. So I don't suggest, you know, sit with a cup of coffee and read it, no. Because you're probably <laughs> going to get sad. Uh, but definitely when you're at a space where you want to feel a part of something bigger and know that the experiences of women are not just me in my home, but yeah. there are so many similar experiences and we want to grow from that, then it's a book for you, for sure. Yeah. And there is a, there is a great, um, there's great power in storytelling because it is the way of, um, well, it is the way of Ubuntu, but also it is a way that connects us in, um, in a far deeper, on a far deeper level. So what that book does is, is almost it just catapults you into yeah. your own story because everybody can identify with something in that. Yeah. And it's actionable. You know, after the, after the read, it's actionable. Your life becomes so much more actionable because you suddenly realize, yeah, it's, it's an experience, but it's one experience. Yeah. It's not the whole of my world. You know? Yeah. yeah. Then we just need to move into action. We need to get back into movement. Yeah. Um, that's what I like about it very much. I love it. I love what you're saying because what I found was that in, in, in you know, just looking through it, and I haven't read the book personally, but looking through some of the, the reviews and things, is that it unveiled the shame. It took it away. It, it like, it just says, okay, this can happen, it can happen yeah. to anybody, but also yeah. there's a way out of it. And what that does intrinsically for us as human beings is it moves us from victim to creator of our lives. Okay. I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. That's yeah. the bottom line. That's the That's bottom line. line. And the experiences are just one aspect of my life. Mm. As traumatic as it is, and I don't ever want to belittle the experience, yes. never. Yes. yes. As traumatic as the experiences have been or are, they were just a part of my life. Yeah. There is so much more to yeah, that. To that. And, and you know, it's so strange because personally, I've lived so, through some, some horror stories in my life of abuse. Who hasn't? <laughs> abuse. <laughs> and, you know, all of us, some of us, you know, name it, I, I can probably put some tick boxes, but it's not all of who I am. It was just an experience. And when oh. you tell it in story, when you tell it in story, and when you begin to share the story, it loses its power over you. Correct. Yeah. And so it liberates, it liberates the human spirit. Yeah. Uh, very exciting book. Very exciting book. So, uh, I mean, uh, this question almost seems rhetorical now, but what makes this book a must read for every person, even though it's not an easy read? The fact that we are women engaging in the world. Yeah. Because if we are women actively engaging in the world, these are the kind of issues that we're going to be dealing with. And again, I don't want to create this as a generalized option, you know, generalization for yes. all of our experiences. Absolutely not. Okay. But these are such real and experiences of such a big group of women that somehow we're going to find one or two threads that belong to you and I. And that's where we need to be able to take into. So, you know, that's the reason why I think we would. And the other aspect for me would be also to be able to empathize. If it's not my life, and I haven't been able to experience that, thank you. Yeah. Maybe I can now empathize a little bit more with my sister, with yeah. my community, you know? Um, so from that perspective as well, it's an opportunity to actually connect and grow as sisterhood. Yeah. I, I want to also say something that I, I found very interesting. Uh, you'd notice that the forward was written by um, a gentleman, yes. okay? And what was really, really interesting was that he was able to give me a male perspective, Dr. Ratan Sharda. Yes, he I was see. able to give a male perspective on the issues that were counted in, in that book. And from that, you know, when the women went out of the training facilitation programs 
and when they discussed with their husbands and their partners, etc., and yeah. then you know WhatsApp, it was like my husband says thank you, and my husband feels responsible, and now he wants to work with me. Yes. And, you know things that sometimes men also may overlook. Not all men, but it may overlook because we haven't admitted ourselves. You know, yes. Yes. but this is perhaps a platform for them to be able to also be part of the solution, yes. as opposed to just playing ignorant about certain things. Yeah, yeah. So in one sense, it's not only then just for the female community or about the female community. It creates an opportunity for men to also be part of the solution, to empathize that this is so real. And you know, I always say gender-based violence is a man's issue. It's not actually a woman's issue. Right, it's all our issues. <laughs> it's man <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Totally. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so you know, following from that and from your book, um, what is it that some, what are some of the things that we as sort of ordinary women, uh, women who perhaps don't have a platform as, uh, as influential as yours, um, how can we mobilize? What, what do we need to do in our daily lives that you think could possibly um, bring us into solidarity, bring us into the sisterhood? I don't want to be simplistic about this. Yeah. The bottom line is model the kind of behavior that you want to see. Yeah. That's it. Model the kind of behavior that you want to experience in the world. And it comes back even to my quotation that I've been using for the past 27 years. Be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. I'm aware of what's happening all around me. Yeah. I'm also aware of the things that are happening in my own personal life. Yes. The bottom line is, do I want to again be a victim and live a victim mentality? Or do I want to be that angry, bitter woman that's always pointing a finger and pointing a finger? Mm. Or do I understand that actually I am part of the solution? Because if mm. I am part of the community that created this issue, that's it. We do not live in isolation. If I see something negative happening in my neighbor's home and I'm not part of the solution to heal that, I am also part of the problem then, not physically and directly, but I am. Yeah. So how do I do, how do I heal that? By modeling, modeling the kind of behavior, modeling the kind of mindset consistently and in small bits, but consistent daily practice. Again, I don't want to simplify it, but that's what it is. Modeling the kind of behavior that you want to live because we are part and parcel of the world and we have a responsibility again to live the best kind of life that we have. We have the need to honor and give in gratitude for all that's been bestowed upon us. So we need to be able to make the choice to truly be the change we want to the world. It's not about you. The change has to start with me because mm -hmm. it can only start with me. And if I'm doing it, and if you are loving what you are seeing and experiencing with me, it becomes infectious, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All of us then be part of that. Yeah, yeah, it does become infectious. And you know, you said something very powerful, be aware, be aware, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of what's happening in the world. Um, not, not from a negative point of view, but be aware to be the solution. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, well, you know, the one beautiful uh, training program that I'm very passionate about, and especially uh, in terms of my research is emotional intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the bottom line is we as women are so, not, I shouldn't say just women, we as human beings yeah. are such creatures that we are so reactive. We react without even full awareness of exactly what's going on. Yeah. Hence, we, you know, a couple of moments later, or a couple of days later, we go by and say, I'm sorry. You know, hence yeah. we do that. But emotional intelligence allows us the opportunity to become so acutely aware of how my emotions impacts on you in the home, in the community, in my work environment, in the country as a whole. And if I am responsive as opposed to reactive with the negative high volume uh, emotions, yeah. it's not going to build the community. It's not going to build my home. It's going to break us. Yeah. So understanding how emotions build us is very, very powerful transformational tool for me. So that is one of the things that we as a community should be able to do. Be patient about certain things. Everything doesn't need to be uh, responded to immediately. Choose our mm -hmm. battles, really choose our battles. 
Not mm-hmm. everything is for you and I to fight. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's great wisdom, and it does sometimes come with age, you know. <laughs> but but <laughs> but an experience. But to choose your battles, to choose your battles, it's also very it's very very uh, wise. Um, so, Sarisha, what is your message of hope to the world? My message of hope is that living a really good life is doable, is livable, and it can happen in the now. Yeah. It literally is a decision away. Again, I don't want to ever belittle the kind of difficulties that we do experience in the world. Yeah. But there are even far more greater examples of individuals who have lived horrific lives and have yeah. come out of it. So what stops us then from being able to do that? You know. So quite frankly, for me, it is a decision away. It's a mindset away. And it is small, consistent actions that you and I need to be able to do to truly live um, far more connectedly, to truly live far more with purpose in this birth. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. And we can do it. Yeah, we can. We can. So, yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, you know, throughout our chat, you've been mentioning small, consistent steps done yeah. every day. Nothing big big, you know, spectacular spotlights, small, consistent steps. What are some of the steps? Give us, an ex- give us some examples. Maybe just unpack that for us so that, you know, with, without it being um, uh, simplistic, but just, just tell us what are the simple things that we could perhaps consider? Again, it comes down to creating routines and rituals for yourself. Yeah. And I mean, I think women, we, are, we, are, we actually perfected routines and rituals in the home. However, we need to really look at the kind of routines and rituals that we perform in our home to actually create change. Because the, wherever our attention goes, that's where change is going to be implemented. Yes. So in the home, I need for myself, for my personal self, for the family, and of course, whatever I do in my family ripples into the community. That's how powerful and wonderful it is. Yes. yes? So I think that for me, you know, I did a, a wonderful uh, seminar and webinar recently on the kind of rituals that we can do on a daily basis to empower ourselves. And the one most powerful thing is using a gratitude journal. And if you don't want to use a gratitude journal, many people don't want to write. I love writing. Um, Use the voice notes in your your phone or just, just stand and say, I'm so grateful for this morning. During COVID, whilst somebody else's family lost a member, my family are well immediately there's a sense of gratitude that comes over you. Immediately oxytocin is released in your brain and you go, wow, now the brain is now working and functioning with you. I'm so grateful that I have this body. I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to connect and communicate and grow and learn. So the first thing for me is in the morning, if we can start off by being grateful, yeah, really being grateful. I mean, there's so many books being written about it right now. Uh, Yet we still need to keep reminding ourselves the fact that we are alive means we we have so much to be grateful for. Just look at the guy down the street. I'm definitely far more grateful for what's happening in mind right now. So acknowledge it. Take ownership of that, you know. And the wonderful thing is that the brain hormone immediately responds to it. So we are automatically then giving a release of, wow, all's well in my world. Yes. So we're starting our day from that. Very important. And the second thing, which I think is really a whole nother webinar on its own, yeah. is having the hard conversations with ourselves and then in the family situation and then within the communities. Not being afraid to have the hard conversations. Not being afraid to actually tackle the kind of things that we need to before the issue gets so overburdened and overwhelmed that we don't know anymore how to handle it that we actually see outside assistance. But, you know, that again is something that needs to be addressed far more sensitively. But at the same time, I want to say, I would rather we have hard conversations in our homes with the people that we are born and raised with first, because that kind of love and that kind of commitment to each other will always surpass anything from an outside person. Yes. No, and I'm not being disrespectful to therapists and things like that. But the bottom line is I know that my mom will always love me more and always be present more 
than the therapist. Yes. Irrespective of how talented he or she may be. Yes. yes. So the second thing that I think is very important is to keep the consistent conversations in our home. And if we need to have the hard conversations, be bold enough to have it. It's our family. It's our responsibility. Mm. Mm. That, that's so important. You know, I, sp I uh, spoke to somebody last week, actually, on the interview, and he was saying, you know, part of the, the increase in depression is because we don't have that um, circle around us where we can talk and get the wisdom of elders. So it's often a stigma to go, uh, no disrespect, to go to a, a therapist or a counselor or somebody. But, yeah. you know, when we have the... The, the close circle around us, it's so much easier because it's almost a circle of love that holds you, you know? Can I, be, can I be a little bit bold and say something in response to that? Yes. Would you allow me? It may just come across a bit rude, <laughs> but I want, to, I want us to address this. Yes. Who creates the circle of love and compassion and connectedness? Yeah. Who creates it? You've got to create it yourself. We have to create, we create it. Ourselves. We've got to create it ourselves. Create it. So I need to come back to that idea of vulnerability. Yeah. That even though I may think, oh God, I can't actually speak about this because she's going to think all these thoughts about me. Yeah. Step aside. I would rather us win the relationship and maintain a healthy, wholesome relationship than you have any airy-fairy ideas about me that has really nothing to do with me. So whilst we talk about creating the conversation and having the circles of uh, a community where we can c converse with each other, yes. I want to say, it doesn't have to be something of the past. The fact that you and I are able to talk about it means that we know the value of it. Yes. So let us do it then. Why should we not be able to do it? Mm -hmm. You know, create it on your WhatsApp groups. We have all these fabulous WhatsApp groups, but how are we actually communicating effectively and really being present enough to share empowering ideas with each other, inspiring with each other? Or is it we just, can I be again rude? Or are we just gossiping and rearranging material that's happening in our home environments? Mm. Again, it's a choice. Yeah. But it's a choice I, that we- I think what you're saying is extremely powerful because it's, um, it's not easy to be vulnerable. No, it's know? not easy. Yeah. It's not easy to be vulnerable. It's not also easy to ask for support, even if you're going yeah. through something yeah. um, traumatic or difficult. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. You know e even with, with people who are absolutely close to you, it's, it's quite difficult to, to be unguarded and to just be completely, uh, to bear your soul, you know. But, but it also takes, it, that takes a bit of courage, I would say. Yes. And you know what? Living this birth at the moment is courageous living. If we can deal with COVID, we are very courageous people. We should applaud ourselves that we you know, came through COVID still so sane, still positive, still wholesome, and still wanting to be of service to somebody else. Yeah. So that's courage on its own. So why not be courageous and try to actually be of service to our own issues? Mm, because it does ripple out from the family into community and into society and into, into nation. Yeah. You know? And maybe some of the things that we haven't spoken about are the reason that we are sitting almost in crisis mode. You know, I mean, the static would be the, the steps yes. that we would need to indicate to us perfectly. Yeah. The fact that we have so many people right now in deep depression. Mm. And, you know, it's no fault of theirs. Yes. No fault of theirs. I actually take this. It's very personal for me. I take responsibility for that if I get to know that somebody who's close to me has committed suicide that somebody who's close to me is in depression. This means I'm so unaware. I'm, I'm living part of this community. I'm so unaware. I don't want to be part of a gossip story, but I want to be part of something that we can heal together and grow together, yeah. you know? Yeah. So again, taking responsibility for that uh, empowers me as a person. Not yes. that we want to be in everybody's business. Absolutely not. Yeah. It's, it, it really changed the mindset. It's about really changing the mindset. We don't want to be in your business, but we want you to know that whilst you are dealing with something, so am I. So yeah. let's create this connectivity with each other, talk to each other, send each other inspiring messages once in a while, you know, and just be part of that live, uh, lived reality, not just mm -hmm. dormant, fast asleep kind of relationships. I mean, many people are so proud that, you know, I have 50,000 friends and what have you. Are they really real? Are they alive? Are they, 
Is there fire in that? Yeah. You know? So this is something that we need to be able to think about. It's not about just the tick boxes, really. It's about the life force that's driving the relationship. It's about the life force that's driving me to live the better life that I need. Yeah. And it's about not making excuses, Sarisha, because I think oftentimes we can, we can uh, just fall into the trap of saying, oh, we're so isolated. Actually, we're not. Technology yeah. is connecting you and I um, you know, to a friend. I you know? use the word um, uh, excuses. And I remember many, many years ago, I read this one book. I can't remember the name. But he so aptly said, many of us live in the disease of excusitis. <laughs> We are always making up excuses, you know, that yes. um, I don't have enough money. I don't have the perfect body. I don't have the children that I want. I don't have the job that suits me best. Yeah. What is it that you do have? Yeah. Let's you know? yeah. start and from start. there. Yeah. And yeah. again, it comes back to gratitude. You gratitude, know? absolutely. And getting and that, rid of disease of excusitis. Yeah. And also, you know, that as, as, as human beings and as people, whether you're single or you don't have children or you have children or you're married or whatever the situation is, you are complete. End of story. Absolutely. As you are. Absolutely. As you are. You know, you might desire other things, but in this season and in this moment, there is nothing missing. Absolutely. Yes. You know, again, that is missing. something that takes a lot of mature uh, conversations with yourself to actually get to that point. Mm -hmm. But we need to be vulnerable enough to get there, to admit that, listen, whatever our partner or our spouses bring to us are all the complimentary and all the bonuses. Lovely add-ons. Lovely add-ons. Add they have add-ons. They have apps, you know. <laughs> really apps. The bottom line is I fully am mindful of what I bring to the world. Yeah. And I'm going to work it. And yeah. that's it. And we complement each other in that. We don't take away from each other. Oh, this is such a wonderful conversation. Thank you, Sarisha. Thank you. Sure. I, uh, I'm happy equally. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so excited that, um, you know, that you're on the same wavelength because it does take maturity. It also takes a little bit of courage. And it also takes getting rid of the excuses, you know, getting rid of the excuses. Yeah. yeah. Um, and once we get rid of the excuses, we stop global whining. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. We stop global whining. Stop global whining. I think, I think, and, and I mean, you know, I, I know it's a generalization, but, you know, we, we can, um, especially as you, you mature, have a lot of what moans and groans, you know. Um, and we forget there's also wisdom in experience and years. But, you know, I want to also say something because I remember I was uh, tapped on the knuckle just recently for making this comment to my own niece. Yeah. She brought it to my attention that, you know, you're always speaking about being mature and the areas that bring uh, more wisdom. And she reminded me of something very important, that maturity is not chronological. So our, no. young, people, no. yeah, so our young people have so much of wisdom to share. So, you know, those of us who are a little bit more mature, uh, need to also be willing and able to listen effectively, effectively. you know, not for the sake of listening, but to comprehend uh, what they are saying and how they are speaking it. And I yeah. think that would probably be a wonderful solution in our homes to understand that maturity is not just chronological, it's not about a 40 years or 50 year old person. Our children equally have so much to give us. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, I, I can completely uh, resonate with that, uh, Sarisha, because I have two young men in my house uh, who've grown up with a mom, and uh, my oldest son was in active addiction for 10 years. And so bringing him home over the last three and a half years uh, has been, uh, we've had to have some really tough conversations around reconciliation, around forgiveness, around the impact um, around what an apology would mean, uh, you know, whereas, because words suddenly don't mean a lot. But we've had to navigate this in our own home um, in, in such a way that it became real. And the fact that we are, after 10 years and so much damage that happens in a relationship through something like this, um, after 10 years to be able to say, you know what, we actually like each other. We are each other's, you know, because you always love your family, you know. That is powerful. That, 
But, but to, like your, to like your heart tribe is yeah. something else. It's something else, you know. So I'm very grateful. I love yeah. what you said. You had the hard conversation. That means you all put it out there. You were vulnerable. Yeah. You all surrendered to the process. Yeah. And, you know, that's what we need to be able to do more of. Yeah. And I didn't always lead that process because whoever was in that vulnerable space and, and you know, had to lead it. So, you know, we actually had to learn to hold the space for each other, which was, which is beautiful now that I speak to you, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah because we understand that the children give us so much more wisdom as well. Yes. Yeah. Really not just about the age thing. No. Um, that's actually quite powerful. Well done to you. That is so good for your family. <laughs> awesome. I don't know if I can take the credit because I didn't always get it right, but... But uh, I'm just grateful that we like each other and that we can live under the same roof together, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, you know, talking about that, one of the things that, uh, that, is that I'm very passionate about is being able to get um, feminine, feminine hygiene into the, into the hands of women and girls. Yeah. Because it's something that's very close to my heart. And I spent a lot of time in... Um, in immersion projects in parts of South Africa, living and working with people, not just last year, but previously to this as well. When, when South Africa went into its new democracy, I traveled and worked the country, uh, but living with, with people, you know. Um, and so it became very apparent that this is a real problem, that girls are having to decide whether to buy a packet of sanitary towels versus a packet of bread, you know. And for me, it's very sad. And for me, that is a violent choice in this day and age. Nobody should be making that choice, you know? But one thing that you and your organization are part of the solution by creating the opportunity to, yeah. you know, the, the, uh, the understanding of the vital, vital role that good hygiene plays by yes. being of service to co contribute uh, sanitary pads through your own efforts. Yeah. You know, that's applaudable. And that's something that we should really, really be so proud of. Uh, because there again, you are being part of the solution with your, yourself and your organization to a need. We are fulfilling a need. So well done for that effort. So I, I applaud you and I hope that, you know, more and more work uh, can become part of your way so that yeah. more will be able to get the kind of services that they need. So thank mm -hmm. you uh, so much for that. No, thank you, Sarisha. You know, the, the, the thing is that uh, I'm f we're finding that the stats is showing that 75% of girls in this situation miss a week of school a month. And yeah, that, that for me just sets them back. And it, it starts a spiral that we've got to sort out now before it gets to the workplace, you know? Um, and so, so we're, uh, we, if you'd like to get involved in, in Facebook family, if you want to be part of that solution, please just uh, send me a, a, an inbox or drop a comment and um, yeah, let's, let's try and make a difference together. Yeah. Absolutely, I look forward to it. Thank you. And I will do whatever I can in my capacity uh, to be part of that. Because if each of us is creating the sisterhood, that's your interest and your passion right now. So I should be able to be you know, uh, working with you, alongside with you, to grow that and to empower you to do more. Uh, and in that way, I'm empowering myself as well. So it's not just, <laughs> you know, I'm also learning so much. So, of course, I will do whatever I can uh, to be part of that. And again, I applaud you and your team on that. Thank you, Sarisha. Um, we've come to sort of the close of our interview and our chat. But before I go, and I almost don't want to let you go because there's such a, a hive of wisdom and energy. Um, but is there anything else that you'd like to add or to say or some nuggets that you'd like to leave us with? You know, at the end of the day, if it is to be, it is up to me. That's it. Yeah. So if there's change to be made, it has to start with me. Um, and I need to be able to also know that I'm never alone. And I want to be able to bring out the fact that every single person has a divinely spiritual connection with whomever you choose to experience it with. Yeah. But it's present. It's present. Let's connect with it. Connect with it and allow it to empower you and work through you to truly live your best life. Because any kind of change starts with me. If I want anything possible in the world, it starts with me. Oh, yeah. Again, I do not belittle the experiences of many people who are trying really and you know, have lived through really traumatic experiences. But still, it's an episode, it's an experience, it's an opportunity to say, I can still live through this. I have yeah. a support system. Change starts with me. 
that is ultimately what it is. And we have too much of experience and too many uh, amazing um, individuals who have lived through it for us not to recognize their efforts. We just need to have a mindset to want to search for somebody else who has done phenomenal work despite of the traumas that they've experienced and you'll find it. So yeah. take the energy you want to flow and be the change you want to live in the world. Nothing more than that, really. Thank you. And thank you, Sarisha, for being this change in the world. I mean, I think we are blessed to have you um, on this globe and in this lifetime, you know? So, so thank you for all the work you're doing, especially um, with them. Being really so encouraging and inspiring. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you so much speaking to you. I'm so fortunate to be able to communicate with you like this. Thank you very much again. It's such a pleasure. And I also just want to thank Deshni Gavinda for connecting us and for, for being one of those women that really champions women's causes. Um, you know what? It's powerhouse to know the value of other females in and around her. So absolutely, congratulations to her. And I wish her more success in the world because she's one of those women that's equally doing the kind of work that we look up to and we want to ascribe to. Uh, so I'm very grateful for that also. Thank you for that mention. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. As we close now, I just want to say thank you for joining us again. Thank you for your time and your inputs. And I hope that you were inspired and you were blessed. And as we go, I just want to say thank you from Seeds of Hope. May you continue to uh, plant seeds of hope around um, people and in your own life as well. And may God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. And may hope always light your way. Bye-bye.